as you probably know, the UN General Assembly has been in session this week, and the media, as usual, has been focusing a lot of their attention on demonizing Aminajad. Okay. Uh, but they've not given any attention at all to the fact that this is the 10th anniversary of the UN World Conference Against Racism, Racial Discrimination, Xenophobia, and Related Intolerances. Up? Oh, okay. Oh, I can hear myself well. <laughs> okay. Um, the first conference was in 2001 in Durban, South Africa, and some of our comrades here attended. Uh, it's an important document that was adopted there that we were dealing with today, yesterday, at the um, Third World Conference uh, Against Racism at the UN. Um, the, the document that was adopted was called the Durban Declaration of Program of Action. And among other things, the document declared that slavery and the transatlantic slave trade are crimes against humanity and should have always been so, especially the transatlantic slave trade. And with regard to the Palestinian struggle, the crime of Zionism was equated to racism. The declaration also identified the victims of racism, pointing out the racial disparities in every area of life, housing, health, education, jobs, etc. And the conference sought to ascertain the root causes of racism. In addition, it established preventive measures that governments need to take. The General Assembly members um, are 193 states in total, and they made global commitments at that time to address these issues. The program of action also called for strong anti-racism legislation. It was established that at that time in 2001 that a review conference would take place every five years. However, the next conference wasn't held until 2009, and it was held in Geneva, Switzerland, not Durban. This conference was also known as Durban II, although it didn't actually take place in Durban. And it was held for the purpose of... A Oh. Have to start over? Yeah. Oh no? Oh! Nobody heard me back there? Alright, I'll start over. I'll start over. Reset to watch. No? Okay. Oh, okay. Um, all right, what I'm just finished saying that the, um, at the 2001 Durban Conference Against Racism, it was established that every five years they would meet again to review the declaration. Um, and it did meet in 2010 instead of five years later. It turned out to be eight years later. And it wasn't held in Durban the last time. It was held in Geneva, Switzerland. Um, this review conference, however, was also known as Durban II. And it was held for the purpose of assessing the progress made by countries in combating racism. And it looked at what still remained to be done to obtain justice, compensation, and reparations. The NGOs um, and social justice advocates offered solutions at that time, and the declaration document was reaffirmed. In 2001, the United States and Israel walked out of the Durban Conference objecting to the declaration equating Zionism to racism. As usual, the apartheid settler state of Israel's tactic was to describe any criticism of it as being anti-Semitic. The US's motive for walking out is that these crimes against humanity that they were um, uh, guilty of related to the African-American descendants of the slave trade. And um, in a sense, if they, had, um, if they had given any attention to it, it would have also meant that reparations were in order. Um, and especially with this country being aware of that the fact that the country was founded on the enslavement of Africans and the genocide of Native Americans. <laughs> The, gen the uh, declaration also at that time highlighted the contradictions in the U.S. foreign policy. This year, the 10th anniversary 
um, of the declaration was um, held at the UN and um, it was a high level commemoration of the anniversary. It, it was reduced, however, to a one day event which was held yesterday. Um, in, in preparation for it, Israel led a very aggressive campaign against the Durban Declaration and called for a boycott of the meeting. Um, even though last time in 2009, concessions were made to the final document. Canada, Italy, the Czech Republic, the Netherlands, were some of the countries that joined Israel and the US in boycotting yesterday's conference. The rest of the member states were expected to actively participate. And to compound the situation, though, since um, Secretary General of the UN, Ben Ki-moon, decided to schedule a nuclear security summit the first day. Um, um, prior to the conference yesterday, a coalition, coalition of NGOs was formed, and they were accusing the United States and Israel of sabotaging the uh, attempts to give a rep rep recompense <laughs> to the oppressed peoples and exploited people throughout the world, and of impeding Palestinian people's right of uh, return the right of self-determination for them and for self-determination for all occupied nations. Um, the results of yesterday's conference at the uh, UN was that um, the declaration was reaffirmed yesterday um, at the World Conference Against Racism. Um, there was a consensus declaring and proclaiming their determination, their very strong determination to make the fight against racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related tolerance, and the protections, the protection of victims thereof, and to make it a high priority for countries. Um, yesterday started off in the morning from nine to one with a series of roundtable discussions, and um, a, the afternoon session was a um, compilation of consecutive roundtables, uh, roundtable discussions. And the closing uh, plenary session took place one hour in the evening and the summaries of the roundtable discussions were presented. The outcome was that the declaration that was declared in 2001 at the conference in Durban was reaffirmed once again. And again, the U.S. and Israel boycotted.